The Story of Sinbad the Sailor Once upon a time there was a very poor young man named Sinbad. He thought he could get wealthy by becoming a sailor, so he went to the docks searching for work. Sinbad was lucky. He quickly got a job as a sailor, joined a ship's crew, and sailed away to the high seas the very same day. The journey was terrible, and Sinbad, along with the rest of the crew, faced enormous waves and huge storms. But eventually, the ship reached a small island. Sinbad and four other sailors came ashore in a small boat. Though he was grateful for his safety after such a miserable voyage, Sinbad secretly wished to find treasure enough to become a rich man right here on this island. Feeling very cold and wet from their journey, Sinbad and the sailors decided to make a fire to stay warm. They were just about to sit down to rest themselves by the fire, when all of a sudden the ground started to shake. Then the earth below them vanished, and Sinbad and the other sailors dangled in the air for a brief moment before they came crashing down into the water. It hadn't been an island that Sinbad and the four sailors had been standing on. It had been a sleeping whale. The fire had painfully woken her up, and she dove deep down into the ocean, throwing all the sailors into the sea. Sinbad thought he too was going to die. But he was able to grab hold of a large piece of driftwood, and clinging to it, he floated along with the ocean current for days upon days, until eventually he reached the shore of a sandy beach. When Sinbad stepped foot on this island, he didn't see any houses or people, only hundreds of fruit trees, tropical flowers, and colorful birds. He thought that perhaps it was here that he would find some treasure, when in the distance Sinbad spied a large round white object shining in the sunlight. Maybe it's a house with a treasure inside, he thought to himself, and he began walking toward it with great expectation. When at last he reached it, Sinbad realized it was a huge egg. Sinbad had never seen anything like it before. While Sinbad was staring at the egg, a giant bird swooped down from the skies and landed right beside Sinbad. Quickly, Sinbad grabbed hold of the giant bird's claw and hoped that the bird might take him back to a city. Startled at Sinbad's touch, the giant bird launched into the air once again, flying high into the sky, and Sinbad clung to the bird's claw for dear life. When he looked down to see how far up he was, Sinbad became very, very frightened, shut his eyes tightly, and held on even tighter than before. It seemed to Sinbad that he and the bird were flying for a very long time. But then the giant bird eventually landed softly on the ground, and Sinbad quickly ran from it as fast as he could. Pretty soon he found himself inside a beautiful city. Sinbad decided to ask the first man he saw how he could get rich, and the man replied, our sultan loves coconuts, and he pays handsomely to those who bring him some. Well, that sounds easy, Sinbad said. It's not easy, the man replied, because all the coconuts are now guarded by wild monkeys that make it impossible to climb the trees to get the coconuts. Sinbad decided that he would try his luck anyway, and went deep into the jungle, where he soon found the coconuts and the monkeys. He started to climb the coconut trees, but each time he did so, the monkeys would jump on him, scratching and biting, and thus preventing Sinbad from getting to the coconuts. It was very frustrating and very tiresome. Then Sinbad had an idea. He began to tease and mock the monkeys, making funny faces at them. This, in turn, made the monkeys very, very angry, and they began to throw the coconuts at Sinbad. The plan had worked. 
Sinbad now had lots of coconuts, and he took them to the Sultan's palace. The Sultan was impressed. He had been out of coconuts for many years because of those monkeys, and to show his thanks, the Sultan gave Sinbad a great many jewels in return. Sinbad was now a very rich man. With the help of the jewels, Sinbad bought himself a boat and sailed back to his home, where he lived happily and in great comfort for the rest of his life. The End <laughs>